What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our fifth example video following our course on proof writing. Now all the examples for today's video are going to be about translating written statements into symbolic language and negating them. So let's go ahead and get into this first example. So this example says, all integer multiples of 6 are also multiples of 3 and multiples of 2. So let's go ahead and translate that. So we have for all integers n, this statement m is equal to 6n implies that there exists integers a and b where m equals 3a and 2b. So once again, relating that back to the original statement, if m is a multiple of 6, that also means that it is a multiple of 3 and a multiple of 2. So let's go ahead and negate this. So that so first we'll negate the setup. So that means that there exists an n, which is an integer. And so we're going to keep our original statement here. m is equal to 6n. Then we'll turn this implication symbol into an and, and then negate this second statement here. So we'll have p and not q. So our not q here is going to be for all a and b integers. m does not equal 3a, and m does not equal 2b. Great. So let's go ahead and get to the next one. So this one says all parallelograms are quadrilaterals. Now, for the sake of this problem, I'm going to represent the set of parallelograms as a capital P and the set of all quadrilaterals as a capital Q, just so we can really get this all into symbolic language here. So another way of writing this would be for all P in P, or for every parallelogram in the set of parallelograms, P is in Q. Or in other words, for any arbitrary element of the set of parallelograms, it is also a quadrilateral. Now let's go ahead and negate this. So that'll mean that there exists a parallelogram such that that parallelogram is not a quadrilateral. So that is our negation of that statement. So let's go ahead and get into the next one. So this one says every triangle is an equilateral triangle. I'm going to use similar notation to the last one and indicate the set of all triangles to be a capital T and the set of equilateral triangles will just be a capital T uh, subscript E for equilateral. So this means for all X in T, or any arbitrary element of the set of all triangles, x is in T subscript E. So that means that arbitrary element from the set of triangles is an equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and negate this. That means that there exists an arbitrary triangle such that x is not an equilateral triangle. And of course we know that every triangle is not an equilateral triangle, but we're not going to be going over the validity of these statements, we're just here to translate them and negate. So let's go ahead and get into our next one. So this one says, for every real number m, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then f of x is greater than m. This is actually the precise definition of the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals infinity. So that's just, uh, just a fun little thing to point out before we get into this negation here. So let me go ahead and erase this and we'll get started. So let's go ahead and translate this into symbolic language. So we have for all real numbers m, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if x minus a is less than delta, that implies f of x is greater than m. So I've translated this if then statement into a conditional. So let's go ahead and negate this. So the setup will be negated by changing the quantifiers. So we'll have there exists a real number r for all delta less than or equal to zero. And then the way we negate this conditional is we keep the original p. So we'll have x minus a is less than delta. And then we'll change this implication symbol here to an and, and then negate the q. So we'll have p and not q. So our not q is going to be the negation of f of x is greater than m. And we're going to do that by writing it as f of x is less than or equal to m, like that. Great. So let's go ahead and go to our next problem. So this says for every x and y in r, if x is less than y, then f of x is less than or equal to f of y. So let's go ahead and translate this. So we have for all 
real numbers x and y. Then let's go ahead and translate this conditional. So we have x less than y implies f of x is less than or equal to f of y. Great. So let's go ahead and negate the quantifiers on our setup here. So we will have there exists x and y real numbers. And then we'll go ahead and negate this conditional statement here. We'll have x less than y and f of x greater than or equal to f of y. Awesome. So let's get into the next one. So this one says every non-zero real number has a multiplicative inverse. So let's go ahead and translate this. So we'll have for all n in the reals where n is not equal to 0, there exists an m in the reals such that n times m is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and negate this. So we'll have there exists a real number n with n not equal to 0 such that for all m in r, n times m does not equal 1. Or rather, there exists a real number not equal to 0, such that no matter what m you pick out of the reals, there is no multiplicative inverse for n. All right, great. So let's go ahead and get into our last one. So this one says, there are non-zero 2 by 2 matrices a and b, such that a times b is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and translate this. So we'll have, there exists a and b with a not equal to 0 and b not equal to 0. And they are 2 by 2 matrices, so we'll just write that out. Such that a times b is equal to 0. Great. And now we're going to go ahead and negate that. So we'll have for all a, b, where a and b are not equal to 0. and they are two by two matrices, a times b does not equal zero. In other words, there are no cases where the original statement is true. And just for fun, maybe let's do an example of two two by two matrices that are non-zero and when multiplied equal zero. So we're gonna, let's go ahead and let a just equal a two by two matrix of just threes. And then we'll go ahead and let our b, it's also going to be a two by two matrix of threes, but we're gonna have negative threes on the off diagonal like that. And we can see that if we multiply these two, we'll have a, b. As we swivel our rows from a into b, we will get nine minus nine for each of these spots in the new two by two matrix, which will give us the zero matrix. Okay, great. So that's all I'm going to do for this problem, and that's a good place to stop.